I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market side. A small cap telecom slashes 11% of its global workforce. I'm Patricia Wu at the New York Stock Exchange. Gold's been pretty beaten up of late. What's the impact on the junior miners? I'm Remy Blair in San Francisco. Calabios is rallying into the weekend. The controversial name is soaring on the coattails of the kissing bug. And consumers want food poisoning off their holiday list. Can diagnostics stem the tide of new cases? Welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. Polycom, the company, is a video content provider, a telecom company. It has some 3,500 employees, according to FactSet, but it will be cutting about 11% of its global work, uh, workforce. Those moves coming over the more recent quarters, and they're expected to result in charges of between $22 million and $25 million through the final months of next year. That's what the company said in a regulatory filing. Polycom develops video, voice, and content collaboration and communication technology. Well, Michaels is betting that adult coloring books will be a big seller this holiday season. The retailer said that it believes it has the largest in-store selection of adult coloring books with 175 titles. Coloring books for adults is a double hit, according to Michaels CEO Chuck Rubin. He said it's not quite the home run of the rainbow loom uh, that Michaels benefited from in 2014. The books have a lower margin than other products. Michaels says sales of adult coloring books were up nearly 20% this November compared to last year. Well, Airstream trailers will be looking to hire as many as 150 people next year. Airstream has already added about 60 new people in the last few months to reach 615 employees and exceeded the number it expected to hire after completing a $6 million expansion this year. And when the project was announced in 2014, the company had 450 employees and looked to hire 125. Airstream has been a bright spot for its parent company, Thor Industries. NRG's Ener Energy's high profile chief executive stepped down in the face of investor unhappiness with his efforts to restructure the power generation company. The company announced the resignation of David Crane, a Harvard trained lawyer and one time investment banker who led NRG for a dozen years. Crane was the architect of a bold strategy to greatly expand NRG's fleet of conventional power plants while also building up its presence in solar and wind power. But a billion dollar investment in renewable energy failed to produce the profits that Crane had anticipated and became a drag on earnings instead. The company's stock has fallen by more than 50% this year. And shares of cybersecurity company Proofpoint tumbled 6.5% Thursday after a well-known short seller, Carson Block, named the stock as his best short bet. Block, who heads Muddy Waters Research, made the call at a conference in London. Well, lots of small cap companies making news on this Friday. So here's a rundown. Amberella's profit trailed estimates. Cooper Company's forecast lowered estimates, and Fate Therapeutics was rated a new outperform at Wells Fargo. Five Below cut the top end of its earnings per share view, and Trexon formed a partnership with Butadine and all. Kale Obios is buying a Benzadeo program. Portola Pharmaceuticals offering more shares. Trevena got a fast-track designation for one of its drugs. And Steinmart's comparable store sales were down nearly 5% for November from the same period last year. The retailer's sales shortfall occurred during the first two and a half weeks of November, according to the store. Now, for the rest of the month, sales improved to flat when compared to last year, and they're trending positively for early December. The stores performed best in cool weather climates last month, with the West and the Northeast having the strongest sales. Florida and Texas performed below what was expected. And Avon is in talks to sell itself to a private equity fund. The Wall Street Journal says, Avon is in advanced talks to sell the North American business to Cerberus Capital Management. That's according to people familiar with the matter. As part of the deal, Cerberus would make a minority investment in Avon that would strengthen the company's balance sheet. Cerberus would become Avon's biggest shareholder and might get board seats as well. A gold has been hovering near six-year lows. Patricia Wu is at the New York Stock Exchange with more on that and the impact on small caps. Hi, Jane. That's right. Gold's been pretty beaten up. We're here with Dave Williams of Strategic Gold, and we're going to ask him all about that. What is going on with gold, and where is it headed? Uh, I think it's it's uh, just hanging around down here. These are the lows. Uh, the actual the 2010 low was uh, 1049 on the dollar, so or 1045 on the dollar. So it's, we're basically on six-year lows now. Uh, there was a big crush in, in the gold market last Friday. 1.9 billion was sold uh, in the paper markets, and so the paper markets are really generating all of this uh, all of the sales. Uh, the the 
the ratio of sale of physical to paper now is 300 to one on the Comex, 300 paper contracts to every one ounce of gold. So uh, it, it's an incredible uh, disparity there that we haven't seen in, in forever. So we'll see how it plays out in the near future. And what's the impact on the junior miners? The junior miners are actually doing very well because uh, there's been a large movement of physical gold from the west to the east that it's going to Russia, India, and China, the actual physical gold. The junior miners have been under pressure for the last six years, really, five years at least, and they are actually starting to rebound just a little bit off their lows. Uh, they're doing better than the actual uh, physical metal itself because uh, there is a demand for the physical and the junior miners can provide it. Speaking of that demand for the physical, there was a story that I saw eBay users were buying up one $1,000 bar of gold every minute. Like last week, I think it was, a million dollars worth of gold sold in one day. So I, I think really it amounts to Americans are saying, okay, why, give, why go to Toys R Us, let's go to the eBay and buy a little gold for your, for your kid for the future. So I think it's a, it's a very interesting phenomenon that's taking place. Have you ever seen something like this? Never before, never before like this have we seen it. It's amazing. It's actually amazing. So what's the thinking behind it? Um, you get something that's real and something that's physical uh, as opposed to just uh, nothing. And so uh, eBay actually uses some of the, uh, the, the internet companies that, that you can buy gold off of and they just use eBay to do it. It's, a, it's an amazing uh, marketing technique and it seems to work for them. It seems to be going well. <laughs> All right, Dave, we know what to get you for Christmas. Okay. Thank you very much. Up next, one company on the brink of destruction is now making headlines in a good way. The stock is on the rise. The story when Small Cap Nation returns. Guys, I got the jerseys. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. El Nino. Ready? Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy, it's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. OK, got it. So Hattrick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go, Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. Doug, you've been staring at that for a while, huh? Listen, TD Ameritrade has former floor traders to help walk you through that complex trade, so you'll be confident enough to do what you want. I'll pull up your number. <laughs> Blammo. Let's get those guys on the horn. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like it is time to upgrade your phone, Douglas. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Fight, fight. Come on, fight. It took tennis legend Serena Williams, fencing champion Tim Morehouse, and the world-famous Rockettes years to master their craft. But it took them only moments to master paying bills at Chase.com, depositing checks at Chase ATMs, and transferring funds on the mobile app. Technology designed for you so you can easily master the way you bank. Hello, Bios Pharmaceuticals back in the spotlight again today, Remy. Uh, shares are rallying. What's going on? Hi, Jane. Calo Bios continues its bull run. Global equity markets may be in the red, but it's green arrows for the South San Francisco-based Biopharma. Turing Pharmaceutical CEO Martin Shkreli and his investor group scooped up Calo Bios, which was on the brink of insolvency. Since then, shares have gone from penny stock to small cap. Its 52-week range stands at $0.44 cents to $45.82. As for Friday's rally, this comes on the heels of several announcements. Calo Bios acquired worldwide rights to Chagas drug compound. Now, it acquired rights to savant neglected diseases 
benzonidazole program. Now the company's drug is being developed for the treatment of Chagas. The deal includes a $2 million upfront payment along with royalties and milestone payments. Now Calabas also announced that it is raising $8.2 million in private placement. It says the proceeds from the financing will be used for acquisition costs and to advance its drug candidates. Once the transaction is closed, Calabios will issue 280,170 shares of common stock to investors. What's the Chagas disease and what kinds of treatments are available? Well, Chagas disease is a parasitic infection with no approved treatments in the U.S. and Europe. It's a killer in Central and South America. The so-called kissing bugs are triatomy bugs that carry a parasite that results in Chagas disease. Now, the parasite that causes Chagas is in the feces of the bugs, so transmission is not easy. They feed on the blood of mammals, so for transmission to occur, fecal matter needs to get into a mucous membrane or a bite wound. Chagas affects approximately 300,000 people in the U.S and the parasite can cause heart failure and death. Now, the CDC says the disease is considered part of the neglected parasitic infections group, and the FDA has granted such infections eligibility to receive a priority re review voucher, and that means expedited review is possible for drug candidates. Well, Turing Farming's CEO has turned around the flailing Calobios. What's the outlook for the pharma name now? Shkreli was criticized for price gouging after raising the price of Daraprim. It's been a remarkable shift for Calobias since he stepped in with his investor group. Now Calobias has announced several new appointments and Shkreli is sticking close to his inner circle. Chris Tom is the new interim CFO. He's also the controller of Turing Pharma. And Patrick Crutcher has been named head of business development. Crutcher is a founder and head of BizDev at Turing. Separately, Edward Painter was appointed head of communications and IR. Painter holds the same role of communications head at Turing. As for the company outlook, Calobios intends to file for orphan drug and fast track designation for the drug. Now, upon approval, it can get a voucher for PRV or a priority review voucher for neglected tropical disease. Keep in mind that the treatment is already approved in Latin America. American countries as standard treatment. On a recent conference call, Shkreli, uh, Shkreli also said that no clinical trials will be required for the marketing application of Benznizazil and that the company should be on track to file for approval in 2016. Coming up, the European markets waiting on the ECB announcement. We'll take you to Paris on this Friday when Small Cap Nation comes right back. Good. Very good. You see something moving off the shelves, and your first thought is to investigate the company. You are type E. Yes, investment opportunities can be anywhere. <laughs> or not. But you know the difference. E-Trade's barcode scanner. Shorten the distance between intuition and action. E-Trade. Opportunity is... Before they sat down, one more time, just for themselves before the last grandchild graced the stage, before Katie and her husband hit that rough patch, before Kevin finally came home and the first grandchild arrived, before the sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, and Brad's brief brush with the law, before the second British invasion, Before Katie, Debbie, Kevin, and Brad. Before they became a family. There was a connection that started it all and made the future the wonderful thing it turned out to be. We know we're not the center of your life, but we'll do our best to help you connect to what is. Sometimes the present looked bright. Sometimes romantic. There were tears in my eyes, and tears in my eyes. And so many little things that we learned were really the biggest things. Through it all, we saved and had a retirement plan, and someone who listened and helped us along the way. Because we always knew that someday the future would be the present. Every someday needs a plan. Talk with us about your retirement today. the European markets reacted to yesterday's ECB announcements? Well, Jane, to say that the markets were disapp disappointed was rather a gross underestimate. It reminded me a little bit of a two-year-old throwing a, a tantrum 
uh, they were selling everything in sight uh, and closing as a result a long way down last night. Frankfurt, Amsterdam and Paris, 4% off. Milan and Madrid, 3%. And even London, which is not in the Euro area, uh, was off over 2%. At the same time, the Euro was up uh, from around 1.056 now to 1.094 at the close, 3%, uh, catching all the short positions uh, out. Now today some degree of common sense appears to have returned to the markets. They're creeping back into the green, uh, but they look like they're going to close well off on the week uh, and probably have lost the ground they gained over the last three to four weeks. Whilst the euro is continuing to hold up in the 1.089 range. So, more to see on Monday. I think it's fair to say that uh, some parts of the market overhyped uh, their expectations. Greater rate cut, more significant increases in QE, etc. And to some extent, uh, Mr. Mario Draghi had not discouraged this. Uh, but this morning the ECB vice chairman came out and clearly blamed the markets for getting it wrong. They said it wasn't their fault, they didn't miscommunicate, just the markets overhyped. Uh, we'll have to see what Mario Draghi says. He's speaking in New York later today and he may make some more conciliatory comments. My personal belief is Draghi was also caught on the back foot to some extent. Um, he had been making seriously dovish noises, but you have to remember he doesn't have the final decision. The Monetary Committee is something like the FOMC. It's a collective, and in this case it's a collective of all of the Euro area central banks, and there's a lot of them. And to make this more manageable, what actually happens is there is a subgroup that at any particular meeting has the final authority for uh, decision-making and voting. And membership of this subgroup then ro uh, rotates around all of the, the larger group. And I think what happened this time was that the sub subgroup membership uh, at this meeting was probably considerably more hawkish than Mr. Draghi, probably led by the Germans, uh, who have been unhappy about some of this QE. And he had to cut back his total desires to gain agreement from the committee. Watch out for any leaks over the ECB over the next few days. We might get a bit more misfits. And finally, I think also in this, there was an element of teaching the markets a lesson about who is responsible for monetary policy. It's the bank, not the markets. So, and I think that lesson has certainly gone home. Hopefully by Monday morning, Things will have settled down a bit, common sense will prevail and we'll be back to some sort of norm. However, of course, then we have the pre-FOMC jitters to put up with for the next 10 days or so. Uh, a couple of things on the data front. Uh, one positive one, factories or factory orders in Germany in October uh, rose a month on month, beating market expectations. Good news. Uh, on the other side, uh, EU PMI retail for November came out down on the previous month. But this might just be people saving their purchasing power uh, for December and Christmas. Graham, how did the delayed Dapnex IPO work out? The IPO actually went quite well. Uh, the group raised uh, about £2.1 million, pounds, uh, placed the shares at 148 uh, pence per share, which is pretty close to their target price. At the same time, in fact, uh, another point, Makango Resources, the Canadian rare earth miner uh, that we talked about a couple of days ago, have moved their London launch back to the 15th of January now. Quite why, it's not clear. And how is Paris coping with the climate conference? Well, other than the fact that they pretty well closed much of the road system last Sunday and Monday, uh, to make room for the great and the good and the not so good, I suspect, uh, to get in and out of Paris safely. Uh, we haven't really seen much impact from the climate conference as it's at Le Bourget to the north of Paris, um, not in the city itself.
It did, however, stimulate my ideas for today's story. What have you come up with? You may remember that we did cover a Frankfurt IPO at the beginning of October, Chorus Clean Energy AG. And how are they doing? They appear to be doing okay. Uh, their share price has been up and down a bit and back presently to the issue price. So uh, nothing great, but surviving there. So you have a good news story for us. Yes, I do have a startup story that is hopefully helping to reduce carbon emissions. Tell us more. So Clean Energy Planet is a French company which is based in Sofia Antipolis, which is in the south of France and is one of the French government's uh, technical startup hubs. Uh, and th this company specializes in the design, production, distribution of self-service e-bikes and multinodal electronic dock stations for public and private use focusing on local uh, transportation needs of uh, commuters. Since their inception in 2006, it's developed solutions for some 19 cities in France and five in other parts of Europe, providing some 60 uh, proprietary docking stations for bikes as well as some for other electric vehicles. They offer a range of solutions all of which can be monitored by a cloud-based application. Starting with the simplest, uh, a simple e-bike docking station is the best way they recommend to initiate a bike-to-work scheme and discover e-bikes for public and private organizations. Unlike other products in the catalog, the simple docking station is a manual lock and charge station it provides a low voltage fastener, fastener which you can plug in these e-bikes, which are in fact uh, like battery assisted bicycles. They help you going up hills and ch charge coming down hills. Uh, and they have, in this case, anti-theft devices by key locks uh, and automatic key box collection if needed. At the next level, the city secure bike stocking station is uh, a more generalized application. This is designed for sort of campus and broad-based private operations. Thanks to its uh, patented system, this docking station automatically locks and charges the e-bike uh, and can be made for internal use and can be evolved with a number of stations for the client's use in uh, needs in present and future. So places like uh, universities, big hospitals, whatever, uh, ideal for, instead of vehicles. Uh, it provides a low voltage uh, fastener, a nice looking uh, docking station, a uh, number of positions according to the client's needs, uh, a non-invasive easy installation, and if no longer required, deinstallation with easier maintenance and the option to upgrade to a larger, what is known as the city public communication docking system with uh, also suitable da data analysis. So the secure docking station is an ev evolutionary uh, solution between the simple one that we looked at just now and uh, the bigger docking station for general public use. The next level up provides for a general public usage and is known as the City Public E-Bike Docking Station. Uh, the concentration of this design and high tech make the City Public a reliable self-service uh, bike docking station and they claim is the best mobility solution ever developed. Might be a little excessive. Provides an automatic lock and charge like the previous one, uh, low voltage fasteners, smart design, that can be integrated into the uh, local environment as the client needs. Again, uh, non-invasive, easy installation and uninstallation and maintenance. Uh, a smart station with e-bike collection via RFID badge uh, and SAS for, refloat, for uh, remote fleet management with the option of e-bike movement and analysis follow-up. A multilingual interface, 
booking possible via internet or phone and an upgrade to a larger hub if desired. So the, this is the, a, a global transport scheme for uh, a city or town uh, etc. Finally the top of the line product the city hub docking station. This is the result of their innovation the company and the partnership with Schneider Electric and is a docking station which monitors and can charge a range of electronic vehicles uh, which exist in France and elsewhere in Europe and in fact is a multimodal city hub. It has automatic lock and charge for e-bikes and semi-automatic for electric vehicles. It's smart design, it's again uh, designed to fit into a modern landscape. The number of charging stations, fasteners, etc. can be uh, adjusted to the client's needs. Again, non-invasive, easy installation, deinstallation, bike collection by RFD again, uh, and SAS. Uh, for remote management and EveLink Eve uh, total monitoring uh, for car charging. So various means of transport can be made available at the station all accessible from the same badge. So bikes, uh, electric scooters and various forms of electric car. Uh, again booking via phone and internet is possible and uh, you know, the client can build, client city can build the scheme to their requirements. All of these schemes encourage the use of electric based bikes and cars and scooters and will save some CO2 from previous journeys done by car, uh, etc. Although you do have to consider the environmental cost of producing the electricity, of course. Um, Clean Energy Planet claimed to have displaced some 150,000 kilometres per year so far of car use and as a result save 44 tonnes of CO2. A small contribution to the worldwide problem but one if played out on a more worldwide basis could be significant. I mean Beijing looking at it recently could certainly use this. And that's uh, all for today from Graham Brown for Small Cap uh, Nation Europe. Straight ahead, some small cap restaurant chains have been hit with food safety issues. What this means for consumers and investors next on Small Cap Nation. Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. You want to be the best investor you can be. You want to cut through the noise of an overwhelming amount of analysis. You want the insights that will help you decide which ideas to execute and which to leave behind. You want your trades executed in one second or less, guaranteed and routed with institutional quality technology. Look no further. Open an account and find more of the expertise you need to be a better investor. When I got the phone call that we had received the grant, I held my breath. To have a program like this is a big reward. Being a Chase Mission Main Street grant recipient is a game changer. One of the biggest surprises in starting a small business is the number of hours we should work for the first 20 years. <laughs> 
One of the great things about this grant is that it is going to let us invest in some additional inventories. It's going to allow this business to go to the next level. Being a recipient of this grant, we can't be thankful enough. It's a dream come true, and I'm still in awe. The WHO released global estimates on food poisoning, and the organization estimates one in ten people die worldwide every year. That's about 600 million people total. Several grocery and restaurant chains recently have had recalls and are feeling the pain of food poisoning. How can consumers keep food poisoning off their holiday list? Food poisoning cases are a tricky subject. The source of the poisoning needs to be identified, and when we're talking prep foods, it raises the question of whether the source stems from the handling and preparation process or at the source. or origin of the ingredients. Now, Chipotle is still recovering from its E. coli outbreak. The origin of the six-day outbreak at 17 Chipotle restaurants is still unknown. Separately, an E. coli outbreak linked to contaminated celery led to a major recall of Taylor Farm products. The celery triggered the recall of products at grocery chains and Starbucks nationwide. Meanwhile, a salmonella outbreak sickened people in nine states. The CDC believes that the salmonella can be traced to a line of nut butter blends. Luckily, no deaths or hospitalized have been reported. Earlier this year, a major salmonella outbreak linked to cucumbers from Mexico caused four deaths and sickened over 800 people. Now, the CDC does have some recommendations for consumers. It says that people can report instances of foodborne illnesses to the health department, health care providers, and also keep track of the actual source. It also offers guidelines on cooking temperatures, hygiene, proper refrigeration of foods, and recommends avoiding cross-contamination of high-risk food products. Well, Americans may be worried about the safety of their food supply, but what treatments and protections do we have? Well, this brings us to the diagnostics behind food poisoning. Bacteria are the cause of most outbreaks of food poisoning for which a specific cause is found. And to know with certainty that a bacterium is causing food poisoning, this bacterium must be cultured. And in any food poisoning incident, the faster the detection, the better. In some cases, the bacteria isolated from the culture may be tested to see if they produce toxic substances. And IDing these substances is complex and is not even conducted by most bacteriology labs. Great Basin Scientific is a molecular diagnostic testing company. It's a microcap and also a penny stock, but worth looking at. It develops and commercializes molecular diagnostic systems that test hospital attained infections. It also provides Group B strep tests, and the company's assays in clinical trials include staff IDing. It also has assays under development and foodborne pathogen panels designed to detect the causes of food poisoning. As for E. coli, uh, North America does dominate the global diagnostic testing market. It the advanced application of bacterial diagnostic instruments has been a key driver. Ramped up government support has also boosted growth. Now, big farmer operating in the space include Abbott Labs, Novartis, Johnson & Johnson. Other names include Affymetrics, as well as BioMariu, BioRad Labs, Thermo Fisher Scientific, and Siemens. It's been nearly a century since Congress passed the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act amid worries about food safety. And, uh, of course, there's a lot of biotech work on this as well. Are there any viable solutions? Well, that's a great point, Jane. Back in 1938, Congress passed the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, also known as FDCA. And this act was set to protect the health and safety of people by preventing articles deemed harmful from entering interstate commerce. Now, a food product is deemed adulterated if it was prepared, packed, or held under unsanitary conditions and may have been rendered injurious to health. The act includes food articles that contain poisonous uh, substances, and violators are subject to both civil and criminal liability. Liability. There's the argument that GMOs could lower food poisoning incidents, but this also raises the issue of whether modified foods are really safe for consumption. And it also raises many questions that are still unanswered by regulators. At the end of the day, consumers, businesses, and government will need to keep working together to reach an actual solution. Want to buy, sell, or hold? We'll have the list on this Friday, December 4th, when Small Cap Nation returns. Guys, I got the jerseys. Oh, yeah. 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 El Nino. Aquí. Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. OK, got it. So hat trick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go, Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. Doug, you've been staring at that for a while, huh? Listen. 
TD Ameritrade has former floor traders to help walk you through that complex trade, so you'll be confident enough to do what you want. I'll pull up your number. <laughs> Blammo. Let's get those guys on the horn. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like it is time to upgrade your phone, Douglas. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Let's go, Serena. Fight, fight. Come on, fight. It took tennis legend Serena Williams, fencing champion Tim Morehouse, and the world-famous Rockettes years to master their craft. But it took them only moments to master paying bills at Chase.com, depositing checks at Chase ATMs, and transferring funds on the mobile app. Technology designed for you so you can easily master the way you bank. Well, lots of activity in today's buy, sell, and hold action. Affamed rated a new outperform at Wells Fargo. Applied Genetic Tech also rated new outperform at Wells Fargo. Atwood Oceanics upgraded at Barclays. Bluebird Bio rated a new outperform at Wells Fargo. Celestica rated new neutral at B. Riley. Fate Therapeutics, a new outperform at Wells Fargo. Halozyme, a new outperform at Wells Fargo as well. And GoPro was downgraded at, downgraded at Robert Baer. Heartland Express cut to a neutral at Longbow Research. Infinera rated a new outperform at KeyBank. Night Transportation cut at Longbow. Myocardia rated new outperform at Wells Fargo. Nimble Storage rated out overweight at JP Morgan. Oncomed, a new outperform at Wells Fargo. Regulus Therapeutics, an outperform at Wells Fargo as well. And Rouse, a new neutral at Baining and Scattergood. Swift Transportation cut to neutral at Longbow. Tokai Pharma, an outperform at Wells Fargo. Vite Pharma, also an outperform at Wells Fargo. And Zio Farm was rated a new underperform at Wells Fargo. As Wells Fargo analysts, very busy. Well, thanks for joining us for Small Cap Nation. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, check back for the latest news and research on smallcapnation.com, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you.